glory uh, or the godly abandoned uh -huh. or their children begging for bread. Now, I'm going to put myself in this particular passage of scripture and I'm going to say, and as a matter of fact, I'm just going to, we're going we're gonna to let our imaginations run a little bit. I'm going to say that this was, you know, I'm about 10 when I, when I referenced that I was young, right? So from, from the time I was young, say around 10, when I could remember seeing things like that, I've never seen the godly abandoned. And here I am now, maybe find myself 80 or 90 years old. And I, in, in all of that time that has elapsed, I have never seen the godly abandoned. Well, why is that? Because I can't put my trust in the Lord because he really truly is Re reliable. There he really truly is. He does have the ability to make sure that I never have to beg for bread. Right, that I right. never go without. Amen. So it don't matter if it's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 60 years, or whatever have you. Uh -huh. I have I won't have to have ever seen the godly begging for bread. Right, yeah, right, right. In all that time, I've never seen God fall short. And so I'm able to take a firm belief in his words. Mm -hmm. Now, it takes a particular level of crazy mm -hmm. and a particular level of trust mm -hmm. to decide you're going to start a church. Now, I mean, it, it takes a very, a very particular level of crazy. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like an anointed crazy, but you got to get And then you have certainly have to have a trust, a firm belief. If we're going to look at the definition of trust, you got to have it. If you're going to have a firm belief in the reliability of what you heard God say to you, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. and in his ability to then carry out those words that you heard him say to you, if you're going to start a church. Right, right. Now, not only, so we, we got that, right? Uh -huh. But not only that, it takes all that to start a church, but then you're going to start one in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Of which I've always heard San Francisco referred to as like Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? Uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. That's what people... That's what church folks in the Christian world, that's what they, outside of San Francisco, that's what they call San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I know there are folks in the Christian world that is afraid to come to San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. They won't even come. I'm serious. I'm not playing. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm serious. So, yeah. so if you, you have to have, and it's fitting that is is big sister Yen. Because <laughs> they, listen, you have to have a particular level of crazy. An extra special level of crazy and a whole lot of trust in the Lord right. to start a church in San Francisco. Right. Yes. I mean, <laughs> let that sink in for a moment. Yes. Now, yeah, yeah, is that it will if you if you have never called on Jesus, the thought of that will make you call on Jesus. Yes. Yes. Quick and loud and fast. Like, Jesus, we need you to be. Matter of fact, when I get there, I need you to already be there. Like, I need you to already be doing some stuff. Like, I, I don't, listen, I don't really want you to be with me. I want you to be before me. Like, I want you to already be there. You know, like, I want you, yeah, I want to know you with me. But I really want to see you there before me, already working it out, already doing things because, you know, Lord. You told me to start a church, and you told me to start where? Right. <laughs> right. So, Lord, you, I need you to be all of you before I get even get there. Amen. And so, Psalm 37, 25 lets us know that God does not forsake his people. Right. He does not abandon Amen. the God. And so, this should give us hope, right? Amen. Now, Isaiah 55 and 11 mm -hmm. All right. speaks to us as well concerning this same thing in a different way. Give us that. It is the same with my word. Uh -huh. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. Oh, yes. 
Now, here it is. He said, it is the same uh -huh. with my word. Yes. Uh -huh. He said, look, let me just be honest. You don't even really need me to go. If I send my yes. word, yes. Yes. It, yes. if I send it out, it always produces fruit. Yes. He didn't say sometimes. Right. He didn't say that it might. Right. He didn't say it only produces fruit on Sunday. Yes. Always produces fruit. Yes. It will accomplish all I want it to. And what else it say? And it will prosper everywhere I send it. Oh, and it will prosper Everywhere I send. So if I send my word to the backside of San Francisco, yes. it'll prosper in the backside of San Francisco. If I send my word to the Fillmore District in San Francisco, it's going to prosper in the Fillmore District in San Francisco. Somebody up here is going to say whether they want to or not. Because his word is going to If he send his word to China, there's going to be some folks in China that's going to get saved. If we send his word to New Zealand, guess what? It's going to prosper in New Zealand. Somebody over there is going to get If he send his word to your house, guess what? Your house is going to prosper. Somebody will be saved in your house. Because his word will always accomplish all. It says all I wanted to. Yes. So there is one thing that he wants his word to accomplish yes. that it won't accomplish. Yes. Not one thing. Because he himself said, it will accomplish all I want it to. Yeah. And like my bishop always say, what's outside of all? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. There ain't nothing outside of all. So therefore, if he says it's going to accomplish all I want it to, yeah. it's going to do all of that. Amen. The dog won't get saved if you wanted to. Right. Amen. Amen. And so, talking about again, trusting the Lord, right? Yes. Because trust is defined again as a firm belief in the real life, in the reliability and truth. Well, we know God's word is true, yes. and so if we can trust the truth of His words. Period, yes. and we, he, we just discovered that it will accomplish all it's sent out to do. Mm -hmm. The King James Version says it will not return to him void. Mm -hmm. yes. Which means it ain't going to go out and come back with nothing. Amen. It ain't going to come back empty handed. Right. It's going to come back with everything it was, uh, it was sent to get. Amen. It's going to come back with all of it. Right, like, right. here I am, Lord. And here's what I was supposed to get. Uh -huh. yes. We're the only ones that go out and come back with nothing for the Lord. We're the only ones that God will give a word to and tell us he wants us to do a thing or whatever it is. And we will, it'll be a year or two or three or four or five years later and we still ain't done nothing with what he told us to do. But we say the Lord told me to do this. Yes. Did he really? Yes. Because if if we if what I read and what my twin read rather is true, then his word, which if he spoke it to you or to me, mm -hmm. is still his word. If he said, James, go do a thing, uh -huh. that is his word. And so therefore it should not come back to him void. Right. Right. It should I should not show up empty handed. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so there is a bit of a challenge in here that I find myself giving to us now is that if in fact God has spoken a word to you about a thing to do, whatever that thing is, he may have pressed upon your heart and said, I want you to do. Do not show up with that with him, boy, empty handed. Amen. Do not come back empty handed because his word will accomplish all that is yeah, sent out yeah. to do. Now we understand because we started off in the very beginning. We know that while you're trying to make happen whatever it is God has called you to make happen, you're gonna get tired, right? Mm -hmm. We discovered that because we know it, the scriptures start talking by telling us, "Let's not get tired," which basically says you're gonna get tired. Amen. Yes. Amen. Just don't quit. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. you're gonna get tired. Yes. Just don't quit. Yes. 
so what we're doing now, though, is a way to discover how not to quit because we know the tire is going to come. And and, and again, it's, and and, I, and 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 again, I was, as I was preparing for this, I did a little bit of research and I learned that that marathon runners. They, they, they run the marathons differently. They train differently. Right. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Right? Yes, yeah. Than any other runner. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so there's there's an aerobic and an anaerobic, I guess if you will, exer type exercises that you that you do, right? And for marathon runners, ideally they want to be more on the aerobic side of things. It's what allows them to run at max speed for a long distance, right? For longer distances. Right. And so, it, it, you, so now you gotta think about this because if you, if you train appropriately for a marathon, you'll be able to run that marathon and although you will, you will be tired, you won't be tired. Yeah. That's the part because you, you're gonna get tired, but you won't be tired, right? right? Like you, you'll know when your, like your mind will tell you you tired because uh, you on mile five. You should be tired right now, right. and so your mind will tell you you tired. But if, if you train appropriately, your body will keep running. It'll yeah. keep doing its thing, and you'll be and you'll be okay. All of you are like, no, you should be tired. You won't really be tired. Uh -huh. And so, so it is with us as 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 believers. We have to learn how to run this marathon appropriately. Yeah. We have to learn how not to get tired in yeah. doing what is good. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the thing is the harvest, right? Yeah. At the end, you gotta get, you gotta run all twenty six point two miles. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you gotta run all of them. You can't, yeah. you can't yeah. run twenty six point one. Because yeah. the finish line is at, the, at that point two. Yeah. 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 So if you go to point one. You ain't gonna finish, right. and all the other twenty six miles don't even matter at that point. Because I'm all about results. I don't Amen. care about nothing. I only care about if I finish, right. if I win. That's right. I'm competitive, so if I'm gonna do something, that's right. I'm gonna win, that's it. or I'm at least gonna finish. That's so it. I'm not the one that's gonna go twenty six point one miles and quit. If I'm, at, if I'm at the point where I can't run no more, then I am going to just Boy. die. Yeah. My way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be all busted and bruised, yeah, uh, but I'm gonna cross that finish yeah, line. Yeah, I yeah. will not quit yeah, before yeah. the end. Yeah. I'm too competitive yeah, because yeah. let somebody else be running with me that I know, yeah. and if they finish, oh, oh no. Uh, right? James is finished. I might die in the process, but I'm gonna finish. Yeah, yeah. You just drag my damn body across the line, <laughs> but you better make sure I'm at. I finish. Yeah, yeah, right? Because I'm too competitive to let somebody else beat me. Amen. Right. Come on. There it is. Now that's just me. So we have to learn how to do this. And so that's what we're looking at right now. So if we put our trust in the Lord, it tells us it will find new strength. That's right, that's right. Because guess what? At some point, and in doing this long enough, you're going to need to find some new strength. Yes, yes, Whatever strength you started with is going to be deplete. It's going to be low. It's like that. It's like your gas tank. It's going to get you so far, but eventually, you're going to run out of gas. Eventually, you're going to be tired. And if you don't pull into the gas station for a little fill-up, you're going to find yourself stuck on the side of the road, holding somebody for gas. Now, now that's just fitting. Because my twin, who I love dearly, just recently ran out of gas. <laughs> because she didn't feel like stopping to get gas. The gas light was on. I know the gas light was on because in cars now they make the light come on. And in some cars they talk. They tell the engine or they call. They tell you, you got you almost out of gas. You know? And so, so you have to be ignoring the gas light for quite a bit. To run out of gas and be on the side of the road. And by the picture that she sent, it looked like she wasn't even in civilization where she ran out of gas at. It looked like she was all in the countryside somewhere and had to call her son to come bring her some gas. <laughs> and, and, and look, and here's the cold part. She spent more to get the gas brought to her than she would have spent just stopping to get the gas. Because she had to then buy a gas can. Amen. For her son to get the gas in, so you can pay for the gas oh, and the gas yeah. in. Just stop and get the gas. Oh, amen. <laughs> it's all right. That's my, that's my twin. She loves me. She gonna have every time to get me back. Don't worry about it. And trust me, she will. Just have mercy on me. 
we have mercy on them. <laughs> and so we got to look at this because if, if we're going to do this, if we're going, if we're going to, if we're going to call ourselves Christians, and, yes. and, and, and by and by saying that we are, God has purposed each and every one of us for a thing. And so, therefore, if we're going to be a Christian and try to attempt to fulfill the purpose that God has called us to do, we then need to understand how to do this. We need to understand how to continue to not get weary in the well-doing. Yes. Right, right. Uh -huh. yes. Because it, it, it's, it's everybody can start. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yes. Not everybody finish. Uh -huh. And that's why Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, basically, look, don't uh -huh. quit. Uh -huh. Because I have some stuff for you at the end. Yes. Right. Yes. right. But you got to get there. Uh -huh. And so Isaiah 55 says that his word will always produce fruit. And so what happens as we get involved in ministry or fulfilling the purposes that God has called us for, we start, we, we know that we should put our trust in the Lord and we know that it's, it's him that's doing it. But every now and then, you know, because we're all human, we all, we all have that natural humanistic defect, we start trying to do things ourselves. We start doing it ourselves and putting forth all this energy and all this effort. And because it, it takes that. I mean, anybody doing ministry on any level knows it takes work. Right. It yes. takes physical work to do it. So right. we, we understand that. But we, 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 we get so caught up doing that that we lose sight of what, what, what should, who should ultimately be carrying this load. Yes. And so we start carrying the load. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a quick way to exhaustion, especially for us non-young people, yes. right? Because trying to carry the load that the Lord should be carrying is absolutely going to bring you to exhaustion. Uh -huh. <laughs> My God. Because there are some things that we are supposed to do, and then there are things that God himself has to do. Right. And this area over here, we can't play with that area. That's right. Because it's too much. It's an off-top period. We can't handle it. And so what we have to understand then is how, how we actually go about fulfilling our purpose or whatever it is God has called us to. And so we place our trust in the Lord for the new strength. And by doing that, by placing our trust in him, we put our, we put, we, we're now relying on his truth. We're now relying on his ability. We're now relying on his strength to do yes. this thing. And so Isaiah 55 tells us that his word will always produce fruit. So I know he sent you to San Francisco with his word. He sent a word to you to come here. Now stand on that word. And so the great thing about God's word is, is that unlike our words, you can take his word to the bank. Right. You can stand on his word. You can build on his word. You can, matter of fact, you can totally take over, you can take over whole other armies just on his word. Right. So San Francisco will, can fall just simply at God's word. Amen. He ain't even himself got to ascend or descend from heaven for that. Right. He ain't even got to come down. Yes. Like San Francisco can be taken in a day from his word, and he yeah. ain't even that, he ain't even back now. Right, right. He's like that's done, it's over with. Right. We just got to we just got to walk it through to manifestation. Yes. Yeah. So we looked at his word, and we know that we can find a firm belief in the truth of his word. We can we we can trust his word. Give us 1 Corinthians 6 and 14. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, uh -huh. just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Yes. Now, someone with that kind of power, uh -huh. that if he, if he can raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised the Lord, which we already know he did, right. we, we all know that Christ rose, right? We, that's not in dispute for us, right? right. So if, if in fact we serve God that has that kind of power, I think I think he can be trusted to see us through our issues. Right. I think that God can be trusted to see us through our challenges. Uh -huh. I think that God can be trusted to see us through our tough times. Uh -huh. Yes. Like, no, for real. Like, I think that God can be trusted. I think he got enough power to take care of my concerns and cares, right. to take care of your concerns and cares, to take care of all of ours, and not run out of strength to do what he needs to do. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. 
So we're talking about not getting weary in well-doing. Well, guess what? I'm going to cast my cares on the person that they should be casted upon in the first place. Right. And I'm not going to be walking around here trying to carry weight that I ain't supposed to be carrying, trying to do stuff that I'm not supposed to be doing, trying to be all things to all people and all of that. All yeah, right. we know that that's something that, that, that the scripture talks about that, but that's meant in a whole different way. That don't mean that you have to try to be ministry and be in everything for everybody all the time. It is physically impossible for us to do. We're going to let God be God, and we're going to be man. Right, right. As long as we understand the right that, as long as we understand that there is a, that we have a right role in this, and that is man. Right. Yes. We, 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 get, we put ourselves in the wrong role. We, 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 have, we have role problems. We have issues when it comes yes, to knowing do. what our role is. Yes. We want to act, we start, we, and this is people, we, we do this all the time. We, we will operate outside of our role. Now, we ain't doing what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Our role says this. We're doing all this other stuff over here. We ain't did that at all. But ain't this what you're supposed to be doing? Right. It's amazing to me. And it's interesting. Every now and then, I get the privilege to talk to some people, and they'll be talking about how tired they are. And they, I'm so tired because I'm just doing so much, and I'm just tired, and, and this and that. And it's always, I'm like, you might not want to have this conversation with me. Right. Because the first question I'm going to ask you is, okay, what, you what did God tell you to do? Right. Amen. Right. Amen. So of the 12 things you're doing, right, right, right. which one did God tell you to do? Yeah, yeah. Right. And usually is only one. Usually. Yeah. So here's the thing. So they'll say, well, well, yeah, well, but I just like to do this. And, well, you know, I really, I, that just, I just love doing that. And, well, so-and-so asked me to do this, so, you know, I was trying to, and Lady Trina asked me to do that, and, and Bishop was saying, okay, I'm like, uh-huh. And so which one of those did God tell you to do again? Right. That one. And so, if you had to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, and 1 being the worst, how effective are you with doing that? How effective are you been? Wow. Right? Huh. Well, then you hear crickets, right? It's quiet. I said, well, how about this? Because how about this? Because you say you're tired, right? Well, let's lighten your load a bit. Right. So part of the problem is you're carrying too much weight. You're trying to do too much. You're trying to act like you got. Now, listen, there are people to fulfill these roles. God knows everything that needs to be done and how to take care of his people. He knows it. If, 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 he don't, if there ain't somebody there to do it, he will raise somebody up yes, he or he will. will send somebody over there to do it. It ain't got to be you. Right. Baby, stay in your lane and fulfill yeah. your role. Uh -huh. Just be great at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. God can't trust you to be great at that because you're busy trying to fulfill his role. You're oh, trying man. to be God. Right. You're trying to make sure the yeah. praise and worship team got people singing oh, and greeters got people greeting and, right. and, 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 you know, uh, for what? If ain't nobody in the choir to sing, don't worry, God will send them. We're going to have a choir when he send them. That's right. Talk about it. It makes no sense to me. I don't understand it. But then we be tired. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm just exhausted. Yeah. We be, we be tired. Because I'm just, I just don't. I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> First up, you shouldn't be I'm like, yeah. I, I need, I need a break. Okay. <laughs> really? Okay. I was just, Mama, you beat me to it. <laughs> sabbatical is like the church people <laughs> work. Like I need a sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> From what? Amen. You ain't doing nothing. Oh. If we be honest, uh, wait a minute. Well, they said, no, I'm doing all this stuff. No, you ain't. Because we just talked about, well, what did God tell you to do? Well, he told me to do that. And I asked you, how effective were you in doing that? And it was crickets. So we're going to assume that because you didn't respond, that you're probably somewhere around a two or a three at best, probably more like a one. Which essentially means you ain't doing nothing. Let's keep it real. You're not doing nothing. What you tired from? You need a sabbatical. Well, you need a sabbatical because you're doing this, that, this, and that, and all of that is God's area. He don't need you to staff all these other areas. He just needs you to go fulfill the one. I told you to do this. Then go do that. But, but God, 
That's not visible enough for me. I'm just in the back counting money. Nobody sees me. But God, my name is not up in light. Nobody knows me. God is like, I know you. Is that not enough? And I put you over there. Serve there. Jesus, help us, Lord, yes. because then, then we have the audacity to be tired. Right. Well, I wonder why. Because you're trying to be God. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God don't need us to be God. Right. Right. He breathed breath into right. us. Yes. Right. It wasn't the other way around. All right. right. Thank you, God. We Thank we God. didn't we didn't go form heaven. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, since since he, we did not form heaven, God does not need us to be him. Right, that's right. And so that's how sometimes we find ourselves exhausted, involved in ministry, because we just try to, we try to be something that we were never supposed to be. All right, yes. You're helping us, Lord. Thank you, God. Because Isaiah 40 and 30 didn't tell us to put our trust in ourselves. That's right. It didn't say, put your trust in Pastor James. Right. It said, put your trust yeah. in the Lord. Right. But those who trust in the Lord mm -hmm. will find new strength. Yes. Yes. yes, I know you smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you're talented. Right. I know you have skills and abilities. Come on now. But guess what? It didn't say that if you put your trust in your skill and ability, you will find new strength. Right. Put it in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I know that you only you can do that thing. Nobody can do it better than you. Right. If that ain't if that ain't the most church fallacy I ever seen in my that is such a fallacy. Mm -hmm. yep. That you, nobody can do that thing like you can do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So all the generations Come on now. before you, Come on. I guess nobody else could do it before you was born. All right. All right. And so then after you made right. no, I guess it's just not it's gonna cease to exist. <laughs> like there ain't never praise and worship is gonna stop when you die. No. Uh, I, I guess the Lord gonna stop being glorified through praise and worship uh -huh. as if He has not been from the beginning of time before you were born. Yeah, yeah. My God. Okay. I had a conversation with some folks, and I said, look, you're going to have to leave off let go of certain things. You want to get out of this. They're like, I, I, I don't want to do that. I just, I love to do that. Mm. Okay, well, well, then here's the thing. <laughs> Did God tell you to do that? Mm -hmm. Or is God going to allow you to do that? Mm. Mm. That's good. Because, yeah, you say, I just love to do it. It makes my heart sing. Okay, well, then. You need to have a conversation with the Lord and find out if he's going to allow your heart to sing yes. and you do that thing. Mm -hmm. Because he may say, look, I know your heart sings doing this, yeah. but I told you to do that. Yes. 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 That's the conversation you got to have. You got to work that out with him. I can't answer that for you. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you is if whatever is making your heart sing ain't what the Lord told you to do, uh -huh. then you can find yourself doing what he told you to do until you find out if he's going to allow you to yeah. do this. Come on. Hmm. And then when you do that, then all of a sudden you'll start, you'll, you'll find that you got new energy. Yeah, yeah. You will find that you're not as tight. Mm -hmm. right. You'll find that you're not as exhausted. Yeah. Because God takes care of himself. So yeah, therefore, right. because he does, if he's got you doing yeah. this, and if he spoke his word and said, go do yeah. this thing, right. and that means I'm and I'm gonna be with you in this, okay. he's gonna take care of you doing that. Right. He's gonna provide all you right. need. Strength you need yes, because yes. your trust is in the right place. Uh -huh. Yes. Good. Psalms 18 and 32, and I'll read this one myself. Twin say, God arms me with strength, uh -huh. and He makes my way perfect. Hallelujah. Now, my God. My God. Mm. Perfect is not without problems. Right. It's right. just perfect. Yeah. It's perfect because. Uh -huh. He's making your way. Right. Okay, so he arms you with strength. Uh -huh. 
It says God does it. Yes, right. he does. I can't arm myself that's with strength. Right. Uh, that's right. So then if God is the one that's going to arm me with strength, then my trust needs to firmly be placed in him. Because he's the one that's supplying the strength. Right. Yes. He's the one that's supplying the ability. Yes. we got to stop calling ourselves to ministry. We gotta stop calling ourselves to a role. Yes. Or this. Yes. Or that. We call ourselves to ministry all the time. Yeah. And then when we and then we tire. Yeah. Well, because you called yourself to ministry. Yeah. Or to this role. Yeah, so we have to, you got to be sure first that, okay, is this God speaking to me? Is God saying this? Did God say that? Right. Because we discovered a little while ago that if, in fact, he said it, then his word will always produce fruit. Right. Always. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. So now what we have to question is, did his did he speak that for you to do or not you? Because what we have is you exhausted and no fruit. My God. Right, right. Well, now, I, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. I think that I'll, I'm, I'm able to deduce that based on the fact that you're exhausted and we have no fruit here, maybe, just maybe, boo, that just maybe you called yourself. What you say? I'll say. Or just maybe that maybe, maybe you operate in an area that God didn't necessarily speak you into. Maybe he right. told you to go here and you operate in there. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We gotta be honest and gotta be real with ourselves. Right. Yes. Because there's too much at stake. We gotta look at the big picture here. Ultimately, what's at stake, there are lives at stake. Yes. We don't have the privilege to be seen up here calling ourselves in the ministry. That's right. That's right. And so, working our way back to Galatians 6 and 9, he says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. Amen. Well, here's the thing. If you are doing what God called you to do and your trust is in the right place, you're going to get, you're going to find renewed strength. You're going to find new strength in the Lord. And that look, Isaiah 40 goes on to say that they will soar high on wings like eagles. Yeah. Okay? It says they will run and not grow weary. Yes. Mm -hmm. If those, if you place your trust yeah. in the Lord, yeah. right. they will walk and not faint. Yeah. That's, right. That's how we're able to actually now fulfill Galatians 6 and 9. Where it starts off by saying, let's not get tired of doing what is good. Well, we have to understand how to go about doing it. Yeah. We have to appropriately put our trust in the Lord, in his word, and make sure that, in fact, we are doing what he told us to do. Yes. Yes. And see, people say, well, I trust the Lord. Well, I have to question that if you're not doing what, in fact, God called you to do or what he told you to do. All right. How much trust do you really have right. in him? And trust me, when I tell you, you're going to find yourself exhausted here real soon. You're going to find yourself tired, woe out, and in need of a sabbatical. Yeah. I need a sabbatical. For what? Jesus. So, that's how we can avoid being tired of doing what is good. It's to find ourselves doing what we were called to do. What, we were, what God purposed for us to do. What he spoke for us to do. I want, to, I want to be operating where his word is operating. Yes. Because his word is going to produce fruit. Right, right. And it says, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Mm -hmm. Now, we've all had the time where we've been, you've been working on something, and you've been, you've been working at it and working at it and working at it, and it just seemed like it ain't going to happen. And then you something like you get it happened a little bit, or you get a little bit of success, or something happened a little bit, and don't that thing just kind of give you a little extra motivation? Don't it just help you keep going? Like right when I was ready to quit, woo! That thing I I got evidence that it might actually work. I might actually be able to figure this out. 
And so it just keep you going to get like a little shot in the arm motivation to say, I'm going to keep on going because I actually believe now that I can figure this out or I can get to the end or whatever it is. That's what happens. It's just at the right time, you'll reap that harvest. Right when, you see, Lord, no, right when you're about to tap out, you're like, no, I got you, don't worry about it. Right. I, I wanted you to go all the way to your end because I wanted to leave no doubt that it was me that did this. So I wanted you to be to the point where you ain't have, but you was just about to call it quits. You was yeah, just yeah. about to just tap out and say, okay, that's it. I gave it my best shot. I just can't do no more. God's like, I got you, don't worry about it. I, I knew you were going to get there. I just want to make sure that you got you to that point. Right. So therefore, you don't try to steal none of my glory. See? All right. right. Because the glory is mine. To me. And you know we will steal God's glory in a minute. Yes. Right. In a heartbeat, we will. Right. You know, in a heartbeat, we will take his glory in a minute. And smile and be like, thank you. Right. So, God says, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. Now, here's the other thing, too, about this, because this also deals with sowing and reaping. And so, you can't reap a harvest if you ain't sowed nothing. All right, all right. Now, here's the, and here's the interesting about that, because, again, remember, we were just talking about, you know, serving where God calls you to serve and doing. And this is why sometimes people, because, again, they, they, and they, so if they ain't operating in their role, they operate in somebody else's role. So they sowing harvest in the wrong field. See. You serve, you, you sowing a harvest in somebody else's field. Right. And so when it's time to reap the harvest, if they feel, right. they not going to call you back over and say, Auntie Patrice, come on over here and reap some of this harvest and that you sowed in my field. Right. They not about to do that. Right. Nor should they. Mm -hmm. Because you would have reaped the harvest if you were sowing in your field. Amen. But you you sowing in the wrong field. So that's why sometimes you have these folks, they've been, they've been working in ministry all this time and all these years, and they ain't, you know, they ain't got nothing to show for it, essentially. But because maybe, just maybe, boo, you serving, you sowing seed in the wrong field. Yeah. Because you like the way that one look better. Right. So here you are, you know, you you want to, you, you've been working in, as a greeter for 20 years, and God didn't ever call you to be a greeter. Right. All right. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I'm just saying really because I think that's safe, right? I don't want to call nobody out on purpose. But I mean that that happens all the time. Yeah. 20 years of doing the thing and then all of a sudden one day you wake up and I just don't I don't know what it's all about or why I'm doing all this. It just seems like well, I don't know either. <laughs> Why would you spend 20 years doing something you had no business doing in the first place? Thank you, Lord. Because the scripture tells us that at the right time, you will reap a harvest. Every time ain't harvest time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you 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 know, there's a time when 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 the harvest grows up. It don't grow all year long. That's right. And it certainly ain't gonna grow if you sowing in the wrong. If you over there, you over there sowing and working in the wrong field. Right. You all in somebody else's field. Right. Amen. So at just the right time. My God. Thank you, God. We will reap a harvest of blessing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And so, as much as this is an appreciation for my sister. And 